and welcome to episode 28, where we're going to be talking about DAT machines, digital audio tape, the machines that use these very small tapes. Introduced in the mid 90s, uh, and I think I got this particular Tascam DA20 in probably 1995, if I'm guessing. Um, and digital audio tape was a real first for most people to be able to have at home. Uh, it was serious stuff because they were a lot of money. I think this particular one in 1995 was somewhere in the region of £700. That's a heck of a lot of money for 1995. Um, so they were not something that was in everybody's house. Uh, serious home recordists, small studios, and of course the big studios would use digital audio tape. And a few of the hi-fi folk bought them too because the quality was so good. Most of them would either record at 48k or 44.1, but there was a small thorn in their side. They had a system called SCMS, Serial Copy Management System. SCMS was there to stop you making digital clones of other digital products, ideally to stop you recording CDs. You got a CD, 16-bit digital, you could plug it into a DAT machine, Press play on one, press record on the other and make a copy. No, you couldn't. Serial copy management embedded little flags in the data. And if the recorder spotted one of these flags that said it was already a digital recording of something else, it inhibited record. So pushing record just didn't do anything. There was nothing much you could do about that. You couldn't disable it. It was built into the system and it was licensed so the manufacturers had to play the game and do it properly. If you spent double the money and you bought a machine that was designed to be used in a studio, then serial copy management was a switchable device. You could decide to enable it or disable it at will. One of the things with digital audio tapes as well is that the tapes themselves came in very strange lengths. You could get a 15 minute length tape. That is a 95 minute tape. <laughs> that one's a 46. And that one is a 63 minute tape. So they were not commonly 45, 90 or 120s. You had these rather unusual lengths. So the first bit of a tape always wore quite a lot. Uh, if you were going to have a problem with a, with a DAT tape, it would usually be at the very beginning. So whenever I recorded a tape, I would hit record and I wouldn't record anything important on it for the first two or three minutes. Mainly to give myself a bit of protection because if I rewound the tape and pushed eject and it came out of the machine and half the tape was still in there, I could fix it. I'd sacrifice perhaps a minute of tape by cutting out the dodgy tape and sticking it back in. Uh, there wasn't any practical way that you could reliably splice them, but what you could do was throw away the crinkle part and rejoin that back to the spool. You needed fairly dinky fingers and it was a bit of a microscopic process, but you could do it. So I would never record right at the beginning of any DAT tape. It wasn't a particularly reliable medium, being fair. Uh, it was a, the tape was a little bit too thin, the machines were often a little bit too powerful and would stretch them, bend them, condensation got them stuck in the machine. So they were not the best of reliability in terms of sort of having a, a media product. Um, this particular one at the moment is uh, archiving some tapes. I found a few tapes from the mid 90s and a couple of them I'd like to keep. Now I've uh, discovered them, so I'm dumping them out into my DAW. Um, most of the machines as well were designed to be rack mounted. Uh, there, were, there were a few freestanding ones, but the vast majority would go in studio, so rack mounting or rack mounting kits were common. Uh, it made repairs quite tricky because to get it out of the rack involved the, removing the bolts. You then, in this particular one, you have to remove the rack ears from the side so you can get access to the screws to take the lid off to clean it. Um, because they're rotary machines, they do need careful cleaning. Unlike a videotape, you can't just give the heads a wipe. Uh, the heads on these are very, very small 
and extremely fragile. So you need at best a lint-free cloth, some isopropyl alcohol, and you can clean them that way. Um, they did do cleaning tapes, but pretty much all they did was a polish over the top. They didn't get any of the muck out. There were a few cleaning tapes that you actually used wet, so you would actually squirt some of the alcohol on, onto the cleaning tape. It was only probably about a minute long, and as it went through, the alcohol would dissolve and soften the muck, and then the tape itself would sweep it away. But like video recorders, that meant that over-cleaning would wear the heads away very quickly. And once the heads are gone, I mean, there's no point replacing the heads on a machine of this age. If the heads are gone, you just throw it away. It's, it's pointless to even consider it. But digital audio tape was the thing in the 90s. And it hung on and hung on for quite a long time. Um, I'm quite surprised that these tapes uh, play. One of the big snags with DAT machines was what on a VHS video recorder you would have had those tracking lines at the bottom you remember the ones where the picture would have a sort of a noise band at the bottom or the top and the tracking would enable you to get just the decent picture on the screen and that noise bar just off the bottom well the same sort of thing happens to the rotary heads in a DAT machine which means they've got to be aligned extremely careful in the workshop to a common standard and if you deviate from that standard, then there's no guarantee that another DAT machine will play it. Uh, the, mach the machine that recorded some of these uh, was a Panasonic and it was aligned not to the spec, which meant that it recorded and played back very reliably. But when I put one of the tapes recorded on that Panasonic in this Tascam machine, it refuses to play it. Um, I know there's something there because the tape counter works. It tells me that it's 48K on the tape, but I don't get any audio. The audio's muted. And that was a common feature of DAT recorders. You couldn't really guarantee that your master tape would play on everybody's machine if your master tape had not been aligned absolutely to the specification. So that's the current state of play with my Tascam DAT machine. The DA20 was a very popular one. Um, it featured all over the place. Uh, I think there's even a, re uh, a review of it online from Sound on Sound that uh, is probably probably dated 94, 95, 96, that sort of era. Um, I used to use them live. This particular tape here is the tape that we used for live performances. And I think we did something like 60 shows where you pressed play and there was a click. We had the show audio on the right side, we had the click on the left, and it managed to do 60 plays without chewing up. We did have a backup uh, and never had to use it. So that impressed me enough for me to go out and buy one of my own. So that's it, digital audio tape. That's what they look like. And if someone shows you one of these, it's not a DV videotape, which looks almost identical. And bar a couple of millimeters, they're even the same size. So check, you've got a DAT and not a DV tape. There you go, episode 28, all looking at DAT machines. Have fun with digital, look after yourselves and see you on the next video.